Hello, traders. Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, April the 10th, 2022. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll discuss the indices, all of which moved lower last week. In addition to growth stocks with cyclical stocks rotating into favor, we also saw a huge divergence in bond volatility versus equity volatility that matched what we saw back in 2020 when COVID first hit. So that's something that we'll discuss in a few minutes. We have most of our heat maps showing rotation into consumer staples or defensive sectors. That's a caution signal that should be heated. We've been reducing our equity exposure over the last two weeks and our retirement accounts. And starting the week with seven bearish indicators, six neutral and seven bullish going into Monday trading. S&P 500 support at 44.50 and resistance at 45.20. For the markets to see any kind of bullish follow through, we need to see a move back above the vol trigger at 44.75. The S&P 500 started off the week bullish and then gapping down on Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday, hanging on to the 200 period moving average. The 50 day is just below and unless we see any kind of push back above the volatility trigger at 44.75, we could expect a test of the 50 day in the short term. While we note RSI is right at the 50 level. In this weekly time frame, we can see that we're trading inside of this very large volume by price bar. Any move below that would suggest a potential test of 382 first and then 50% retracements, which would be the low that we saw back on February 24th. Also mindful of RSI and volume. MACD has tried to cross, it's been moving higher, and Stochastics is pushing higher as well. So to start the week, we need to get above the vol trigger at 44.75, and we need to see volume and a follow through if we're gonna be bullish this week, especially considering the rotation that we saw into cyclical stocks and defensive sectors to end the week Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the queues are below the, the longer term moving averages in this weekly time frame. RSI is below 50, whereas SPY and S&P are above 50, with no surprise that growth stocks are seeing a headwind with the 10-year yield moving higher. Given the holdings that SPHD the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF has within its holdings in terms of the consumer staples and defensive sectors that are outperforming. So if you're thinking of trading this week, if we do start to see more weakness in growth stocks, I would be looking to SPHD and the holdings therein. Those stocks will most likely continue higher. We saw most of them with bullish patterns last week and would look for that to follow through this week. Additional areas of concern, of course, would be small caps. These are considered risky assets. As such, it's a risk on, risk off indicator. In this case, it's telling us caution, risk off, with 50% retracement or 618 closer to this breakout level that we saw back in 2020. So if you're trading small caps, I would be cautious, maybe scale out of some. We'll be taking more off this week if we see a fade. Additional reasons to be cautious, we are seeing the number of new highs versus new lows back below the zero line. Whenever this histogram moves lower, together with advanced decline in the lower panel, we would be cautious, looking for potential for this to move lower in more of a broadening pattern using the current pivots and potentially a retest of this low where price action found support back in 2021. Looking at the Wilshire 5000, a broad measure of market participation, we're seeing what looks like a lower high, potentially leading us to a descending channel or descending wedge. On this weekly time frame. the cycle is trying to turn up. So we're looking for signs of a bullish follow through this week or a fade where we might hedge more and reduce our equity exposure. 
We also noted a more bullish turn in the S&P 1500 composite, S&P 500, mid cap 400, small cap 600. Last week we had a little turn higher, so this is sort of a neutral to bullish reaction. Histogram is back above zero, so a broader measure of market participation will continue to seek direction on Monday, Tuesday and look for institutions to tell us what to do next. For now, proceed with caution. We mentioned the divergence that we've seen in the bond volatility versus equity volatility. This is of concern. We did see bond volatility get to this high back in 2020, something that tells us to be a bit more cautious and to reduce our equity exposure increase our exposure in defensive, and reduce our risk accordingly. The long bond or 20-year TLT continues this weekly descent. Most likely will continue as that divergence indicated. At the same time, the U.S. dollar continues its bullish trend. That's telling us a safety trade is still underway, making higher highs and higher lows on this daily time frame. MACD is above its signal line and rising. We could see a little pull back towards uh, mean. If the dollar does start to pull back a little bit, watch for strength in the precious metals. We also saw Brent and crude oil drifting a bit lower with NYMEX crude closing below $97 a barrel last week. Brent crude is still at 102.78, while West Texas crude closed at 98.26. So any move lower in crude would help the consumer. We'd look for that to be a bullish signal if we fade a bit more. Copper has just been grinding higher over the last eight months, 10 months. We're looking for that to continue, signaling the economy is fairly sound. The sector heat map is seeing a little bit more oranges and reds. Caution there, the darker greens, areas where we're seeing increasing activity in consumer staples and defensive cyclical sectors, most likely will continue this week. We also saw international indices and ETFs starting to see a little bit more yellows and reds. South American countries look pretty good. India and China are okay. Southeast Asia, we're watching those uh, areas like Australia, with Brazil showing relative strength last week. EWZ, Brazil, with the potential for a bounce this week. The XLY-XLP ratio also telling us that defensives are outperforming. This is a caution signal back in 2007. This rolled over and it led to a pretty significant drawdown into March of 2009. Most recently, the Fed was raising rates in late 2018, also gave us a signal. Given those previous drawdowns and the similarity here, we need to take more risk off and become more cautious going into the next several weeks. Pharmaceuticals did very well last week, along with health care and consumer staples. AMPH breaking out of a consolidation, starting to push higher, RSI showing muscle, and we're starting to see that push on higher volume. MACD is above the signal line, and Stochastix is embedded. Anderson's another stock moving higher last week off of the 21 day, three days in a row, RSI is rising, looking for a push to 52 week highs. Volume was above average for three days, showing institutions have been picking up shares. MACD is crossing and Stochastics is rising. Look for a follow through in Anderson. Many real estate stocks looked good last week. Check your favorites. ARES management, looking for a follow through. Bunge Limited, this is in the agribusiness and fertilizer group. These have been breaking out lately, looking for a follow through. As well as CF Industries and LXU, LSB Industries. We took some profits off into strength on Friday. Looking for a follow through in all of these agra business and fertilizer stocks like Intrepid Potash, Mosaic, 
and Nutrien. Petroleum, oil and gas names also moved higher last week. We're looking for a follow-through. It's possible with the defensive stocks we could see a follow-through in material stocks too. So watch Freeport, Mac Moran, Rio Tento, Vulcan Materials. In this case, Commercial Metals Company. This has been on the IBD 50 for a few weeks now. Looking for a follow-through. Solar stocks are consolidating. Watching the 21-day for end phase. Looking for a follow-through and a continuation. Real estate stocks like public storage, extra space storage, these look pretty good. Continuing this trend higher after consolidating for seven trading days, this started to move on Thursday. It could be a pop follow through on Monday, Tuesday. MACD is above the signal line, stochastics is rising, RSI is above 50 and pointing towards 70. FMC Corp, that's also in the agribusiness, fertilizers. In addition to consumer chemicals such as insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides, we can see on this Market Smith chart a nice cup and handle breakout through the blue zone here. It's at the profit taking zone, looking for a consolidation or a breakout with earnings in May. FMC also manufacturing agriculture, industrial, and consumer chemicals with earnings in the beginning of May. Fact Set Research, looking for a follow through. This company provides research for investors, hedge funds, portfolio managers, etc. Just broke this downtrend and started following through along the bullish 9-21 50-day moving averages. Looking for a breakout this week and a push back to 52-week highs. Horizon Therapeutics breaking out. Would look for a little bit of a consolidation, maybe a little flag for potential trade the point is, is that most of the pharmaceutical biotech stocks are looking good. We'd like to see pharmaceuticals continue as well, like Gilead, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Bristol-Myers, and Merck. All of those we've considered trades on with regard to Bristol-Myers and Merck. Those are still positions that are working to date. Icon PLC, this is an Irish company that provides research to the pharmaceutical industry. As we can see, Icon has good earnings going into 2022, 2023, have been growing since 2015 at a nice clip, breaking above the moving averages, looking for a follow through, volume increasing, it does have earnings in 17 days. Note RS line is rising at 84, a new high. Looking for this breakout to continue and test previous highs. Inspire Medical. Looking for this fade back to the 21 day to get bought on Monday, Tuesday. We have a volume by price support zone where we're seeing price action starting to reverse. Wicks underneath all of these candles indicate buyers at the low of the day. IQV, nice follow through. This also has exposure to the pharmaceutical industry. It's based in Durham, North Carolina. Equivia Holdings provides biopharmaceutical development services, commercial outsourcing services to the healthcare industry. This looks really good forming the right side of this cup. Looking for a follow through. Volume was above average the last two days, Thursday, Friday. Good earnings and sales. We have RS Line rising with earnings tentatively scheduled for April 22nd. Matador Resources, oil and gas, looking for a follow through. Consolidated for the last nine trading days along the 21 day, looking for a follow through. RSI is rising. Volume picked up six days ago. Looking for continuation. MACD starting to turn. Stochastics is rising. Matador Resources engaged in oil and gas exploration and production in Texas and Louisiana. RS line is at 98, a little bit more strength and we could see a breakout good earnings and sales doubling from 2021 into 2022 look for matador resources to continue higher occidental petroleum had a nice week finishing up on friday looking for a breakout of this flat base with rsi rising and volume increasing wednesday thursday friday macd's turning about to cross over stochastics rising look for oxy to continue higher this week Pakira Biosciences from last week's watch list. It was on IBD 50. Looking for a continuation. Volume was above average Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Look for these to continue this week. 
PKG. This one bounced on Thursday, followed through on Friday. PKG manufactures container board and corrugated pa packaging for the food and beverage, paper, and agricultural markets. Consumer staples are bullish. We'd look for this company to also move higher as earnings and sales continue to climb, reporting earnings at the end of April. Pfizer was a trade we took on Tuesday and Wednesday, followed through Thursday, Friday. Looking for a breakout. Could also flag or consolidate at this point, so any jump above the recent highs would indicate follow through, and also that institutions have an appetite for higher prices. Volume was nice, trading about 100 million shares over four days indicating institutions are present. MACD is above its signal line and rising. Stochastics is also pointing higher. PLD, we had our eyes on this one last week as well. This continues this nice bullish trend breaking above recent pivot highs that we saw back in January. Pete Nigerian also mentioned the option volume and flow that we saw in PLD Prologis. Looking for a follow through and a continuation. Public storage along with Extra space storage, both of these on the IBD-50. Looking for a follow-through this week. Regeneron and many other biotechs continue their path higher. Nice follow-through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. RSI is showing muscle. Volume indicates institutions have been picking up shares. And MACD is above its signal line along with Stochastic rising. Real estate stocks, Rexford Industrial Realty. Looking for a follow-through here as well. Building the right side of a cup. Looking for a breakout above 81.44 after potentially building a handle as RSI stays above 50. Volume, it's okay. MACD is above signal line and stochastics rising. Watch for a real estate to continue as an inflation hedge going into the summer. Another healthcare related name, Shockwave Medical, continues to push higher. Look for a breakout above these recent pivot highs. At 215.71. Shockwave develops and commercializes products for transforming the way calcified cardiovascular disease is treated. This nice cup and handle pattern looks really good. You can see the last few quarters have been a nice beat. Looking at the weekly, we continue to beat on a quarterly basis. Sales and earnings flipped to a profit in 2022. Looking for Shockwave to follow through and test the highs of the cup in the coming weeks. We're also watching steel stocks. These have been consolidating over the last couple of weeks. Steel Dynamics showing good sales and earnings going into 2021 and 2022. Manufacturing flat rolled structural bar and rail steels and recycles ferrous and non-ferrous scrap metals. Relative strength line is at 96. Looking for a continuation. If the steel stocks all break together, we'd watch U.S. Steel, Cleveland, Cliff, and Nucor if uh, all four of these continue to move higher. Tandem Diabetes, we've traded this one quite a few times um, back last year. Looking for this to continue building the right side of this cup. Looks like it's going to follow through. RSI is above 50. Healthcare has been doing well as a sector, so look for more stocks in this group to continue higher. Another real estate stock looking for a follow-through in Torino Realty Corp. Came back to the 90MA. Look for a follow-through and a breakout above this pivot high at 77.09 for a potential breakout. Tesla saw lots of option volume last week. In particular, these 25 orders with $5.5 million worth of trades on Friday with some May strikes here at 12.50. Many of these are zero day expiring on Friday. So look for Tesla to bounce. I'd be bearish below 1,000, bullish above 1020. United Health and Humana, both of those pushed higher last week. Major healthcare providers seeing some relative strength as institutions continue with their defensive positioning. We'd look for healthcare, biotech, and pharmaceuticals, medical device makers to continue higher. Vertex Pharmaceuticals from the last couple of watch lists, this continues to thrust higher. 
Volume shows institutions have been picking up shares. MACD is above the signal line and rising. And Stochastics is embedded. Stocks that showed up on the IBD new highs scan are presented here. You can see most of these are just breaking out to the upside. Check your favorites like AbV. Had a nice follow through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Acadia Healthcare. Amerin. Amerisource Bergen breaking out. Anthem Health. Archer Daniels Midland. We mentioned that one on Tuesday. That follow through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. AstraZeneca, Pharmaceuticals, Prudhoe Bay, AutoZone. Rob mentioned this one last week on Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe. AutoZone. Bristol Myers, Bunge, Agriculture, CF Industries, Agriculture, Fertilizers, Centene, Centerpoint Energy, Comstock. Dollar General and Dollar Tree, both trades were on our radar as Walmart, and Costco, and Target all follow through. So looking for that whole group to continue. Consumer Staples, Dominion Energy, EOG, all of those breaking out. Entergy, Edison, most of these stocks showing strength and most likely will continue this week. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com with your weekend video newsletter. I'll send out a watch list later tonight around 11.30, 12 o'clock, midnight on the East Coast, West Coast around 8.30 to 9 o'clock. So be sure to check your inbox for that. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you on Monday morning. Take care.